Hey everyone, it is Sequoia with the Chase Street Renaissance. Welcome back to my channel if you have been here before. If not, welcome. Um, today we're going to be working with direct colors pigment. So in my last video, I showed you how to um, how I color my concrete jars with with the Quickcrete coloring um, in charcoal color. So I showed you how to do that um, and I showed you that it thickens up once you add it to your, your mixture. It kind of sucks that water out of there a little bit. So you may have to compensate and add a little bit more, more water to your mixture. Um, with the pigment, the <clears throat> concrete pigment from Direct Colors, it doesn't really, it doesn't do that at all. So you don't have to worry about that too much. However, you do have to add, I think, a pretty significant amount uh, depending on what color you're trying to achieve. Um, cement all is gray so it, it it is going to take especially with your lighter colors like the one we're going to be working with today which is number 19. Um, it takes a little bit more than I would like to use to achieve just the lightest color that I've that I've gotten so far. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to unmold the jar that we did yesterday which was colored with the quick crete. I'm going to unmold that and show you how it looks today. And then we're going to get into our mixture and, and coloring our new jar. I'm actually going to do my lid today also. So I'm going to show you what that looks like and we'll get right into it. So I'm going to cue that intro. <music> Pretty much all of these types of videos where I'm showing you how I color my jars are going to be in this angle. Um, I'm not going to show my face too much because I just want you to uh, be able to see exactly what I'm doing kind of up close and personal. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unmold our jar from yesterday. And when you're unmolding these, you just break the seal 360. Peel one side down. Make sure you, you're gonna have to have strong hands for this, I'm not gonna lie. So you're gonna peel one side down and uh, get a good grip on it and then slowly go around the rest until it flips down completely. Um, this is the mold from uh, Shape Makery. I actually really like this mold. Um, I really like how it unmolds. It actually is not too difficult to work with in comparison to the one I just got from Modern Craft but it is what it is. Okay, so you're gonna pinch it and you're gonna kind of twist. It takes a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of muscle, but eventually it pops right out. Now, it looks kind of rustic right now, kind of blotchy. That should all smooth out and be one solid color once it completely dries. Keep in mind, that it can't fully dry when it's still in the mold. So we're gonna let this sit for another 24 to 48 hours um, until it completely dries. Dries. You'll notice that there is a little bit of pigment on your mold, that there will be a little bit of pigment on your mold after you unmold your jar. What I do is I just take a little bottle of rubbing alcohol, spray it, and then take a paper towel and give it a quick wipe. It really, it comes right up doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and clean depending on your color if you're using a red or something like that and then you're going to use the same mold and do something light like a yellow okay so i cleaned out my lid also my lid was a little bit dirty so same so we're going to do the same thing we've been doing in the previous videos we're going to do our 300 grams of uh, cement and our 60 grams of distilled water that is for the jar only we're going to add another just to be on the safe side, we're gonna add another 150 grams of cement, and then I'll kind of play with the amount of water. And then give you guys kind of an idea of what I added. Like I said, I pour my water in first, make sure it's set to grams. Sixty-six grams of water. I'm not gonna to fret too much because I'm adding more cement and I know I'm probably gonna need a little bit more water, so. I don't know if this is actually in the frame. Is that better? Not that it's a huge deal, but. It's 
So that's 400. What did I say? Another 150. So I need another 45 grams. Ah, 450. Perfect. So we'll mix this with the 60 grams of water and see what that gives us. That thing, thick. That is too thick for me. So I'm gonna put it back on the scale, tear it. I already know that I added 66 grams of water. So I'm gonna add another, what, maybe like, Ah, my scale's off. Let's just call that five grams that I added already. It was probably more, but it didn't even, it didn't even register. Okay, we're going to forget the fact that we tried to weigh it and just say we added another splash. Okay, now, I'm really not sure if the extra 150 um, grams of cement is going to be enough to add to my mixture. I really don't know. I'm just, I'm winging it here because this mold is from Shape Makery and it doesn't have measurements on the, on the shop. So this is just a little scoop that I actually got with a pouring pitcher that I bought. And I use this scoop, my pigment. So I just did one scoop. And if I'm not mistaken, I added about three to start with. And to give y'all a visual of what we're going for, that's the color we're going for. So I add my pigment right to my mixture. So the thing with the, the pigment powders is that it lumps up. So I like to, I mean, if you're a dental assistant, you kind of know this mixing technique when you're mixing alginate or something like that at work for somebody's impressions. Um, ah, I'm gonna move the mold out of the way. You're gonna smash your mixing. This is why I like a silicone spatula. You're gonna kind of smash it up against the sides. That way you can break up those lumps of pigment. And so it's a little thicker than I like it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a splash more water. Be careful when you're adding your water because a little does go a long way. Next thing you know, you'll have something that's too watery. I cannot talk and mix at the same time. I start mixing, I stop talking. I'm gonna do one more scoop. Because I think for the most part, I'm close to the color I want. See, this is why I said you want to make sure you have some type of barrier between. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I'm gonna have enough for the lid. OK, 
Okay, so I poured everything I had, um, most of what I had into my mold for my jar, and I do not have enough for my lid, so I'm not even gonna pour that in there yet. So this is actually kind of nice because I'm gonna show you what I do when this happens. So I just add another half scoop or so, maybe a little less of cement to my mixture. and a little bit more water. And it's almost like start from scratch. The only thing is, is that now I have to add more of my pigment to achieve the color so that it matches my lid. Now that is way too watery. So I add a little bit more cement. So I'm gonna do maybe two scoops. That second one wasn't as big as the first one. Make sure you're kind of smashing it along the sides, like I said, to break up those clumps of pigment. And you'll know when you have the same color because you can just hold it up to what you already have poured in your mold for your jar. And once it looks similar, you can pour it into your lid. I think we are good. So I'm gonna pour it right into my lid. Give it a little tap and swirl. And there you have it. We got a significant amount left in our mold here. So when, so when I have too much excess cement left over in my mixing bowl, I like to pour the rest of it into a smaller mold such as this. Um, it doesn't have to fill up all the way. The point of it is just to get the excess out of your mixing bowl to make um, cleaning it a little bit easier. Um, so that's pretty much it as far as direct colors pigment. It doesn't thicken up your mixture. Um, the way Quick Crete does, so it is. So these are direct color sample bags. You get five of them for about $50, $54, something like that. And then you also get free shipping, so you can pick five different colors. I'm not sure of the size, if it's like eight ounces, 16 ounces, I'm not really sure. But like I said, I'll leave the link in the description box. That way you can check it out for yourself. And that is pretty much it as far as coloring your jars with direct colors uh, pigment. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video and in my next video, I'm probably going to be discussing um, sealing my jars. That's another one that was pretty highly requested. So in that one, the angle is going to be a little bit different and we'll go through how I seal my jars with the Earth Safe Preserver Sealer. So that is it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.